Welcome everybody to our November 5th town board meeting. I want to call the meeting to order. Please rise if you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. And tonight, our invocation will be given by Reverend Marcus C. Williams from the Douglas Chapel AME Zion Church. Welcome, Pastor. Good to see you again. It's your program. <laughs> Let every heart pray. Yeah. Father and our God, we thank you for this profound privilege we have. Well, we take for granted so many things and You've allowed us to make it through this day, and we purpose to come out on tonight, but you are the one that allowed it to happen. And so, Lord, we say thank you for that. We thank you for our here being, and we just ask that each uh, thing that we are here to hear and discuss, Lord, that we would make the prudent decisions that it takes to uh, lead and guide this town and we will give you the praise for it now. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Item number four is the adjustment approval on November 5th meeting agenda in the airport town. Uh, motion to adopt the November 5th, 2019 meeting with no changes. Second. Motion to remain second. All favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Item number five is public comment period. Uh, please keep your comments to about three minutes. We have one, two, three, four, five. If someone has already said your speech, you can pass. If not, we got all five. So at this point in time, we'll open the public hearing and talk to Jay Lewis. Jay, you're up first. And again, the old fashioned way is come to the podium, name and address. We won't ask for telephone numbers. Okay. My name is Jay Lewis. I'm at 256 Vinewood Place. And first, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two years ago, I called you about a problem about trash pickup at Holly oh, Springs yes. Town Center. I do remember. And you basically reached out to Waste Industries and had where they would not pick up trash at mm -hmm. the shopping center at 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning and slam the dumpsters. I remember. You had stick they put all the stickers and all the trash receptacles saying do not pick up before 7. Well, about a week ago, so I contacted you again. I guess there's no more waste industries picking up trash there. That's right. They're doing it again now, 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4.30 in the morning, slashing. And reached out to you. You sent me over to Public Works. You then sent me over to the town attorney. Basically said there's nothing, anything we can do. Private company. So what I would like to suggest is I did a little research. And in our neighboring town of Apex, the noise audience mm -hmm. that they have there, they have the following acts are specifically declared to be unreasonably loud, annoying, frightening, loud, or disturbing noise, and the emissions of which shall be unlawful. And it's real simple. The collection of garbage, receptacles, yard waste between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. This prohibition shall not apply to industrial facilities located in the industrial zoning districts, including light industrial and tech flex, as defined by the Unified Development Ordinance. So the question I have is, how can we adopt to our noise audience to make it universal so that there's no trash pickup between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m.? And is that something that we can do? It's already written. It's already in a neighboring town. We don't even have to, the township attorney doesn't have to do much. I can drop this off and give this to you, and this is right from Apex. Gotcha. So I don't know if that's something we can do or what the process is to let get us, that let done. Let us see what we can do. It is a private company. That's that's part of the problem. But okay. let us see what we can do. Okay. If you want to give that to me, I'll take it and work on it from there. <coughs> Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Fuller. Name and address, please, Joe. Sorry? Name and address, please. Ah, uh, yes, Joseph Fuller, uh, 333 Wolfbridge Road. Um, I live right here in Remington. 
is behind Point Church. Mm -hmm. And I'm here, I'd like to uh, discuss uh, line of sight issues coming out on Center Street and Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, and then also at Valentine and Main Street. Uh, when, first of all, I'd like to start out for thanking you, thanking you guys for proceeding with the parking, um, striping and the new parking areas because it's very difficult to get in and out of the neighborhood with, with the uh, amount of cars parked on the other side of the road. Uh, secondly, uh, the concern I have here with the line of sight is it doesn't meet DOT regulations. That line of sight, you have columns, Burford Hollies, um, all of which are in the line of sight. If that intersection mm -hmm. is, is indeed a class 3A intersection, um, line of sight would be at least 125 <coughs> foot at a, a grade height of 3.5 feet. Um, and you have about probably 30 feet of sight there. Um, so I posted this on my Facebook, my neighborhood Facebook page, which is Remington, and I got about 20 comments, um, two of which, one had totaled, totaled their car there, another one had an accident. Obviously, I don't think the car was totaled um, given the speed. Um, but there's <coughs> other residents that are not coming into downtown because of the traffic issues and not being able to get in and out of town here. Um, I'm sure that's not what new businesses want to hear down here, and I think we need to make it some accommodations so that the pedestrians, for one, can be safe, people entering and exiting Center Street can be safe, and the people on Main Street are also safe. I will say, too, that the addition of a traffic light at Ballantyne here um, may help out with that situation, but the columns in front of the building here in the flagpole area all obstruct the line of sight. Let's look into that. I appreciate it, Joe. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. And next is Stephanie, and I can't read your last name. I'm sorry. Embry. All right. Oh, okay. That's fine. Would be very uh, nice and say you got a little more intriguing to say. There we go. That's it. That's all I needed. Thank you. Hello, Mayor Sears and Hello. Town Council. Hello. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Stephanie Embry. I live at 304 Mistwood Hollow Circle in the Wildwood community. And I would like to ask everyone from the Wildwood who is here tonight to please stand. Thank you. We've Hi, also everybody. handed in a petition with more than 150 signatures on it related to sidewalks <laughs> on Ralph Stevens Road. Now, let's see. There Can you, you see that? Yep. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. So let's pull this up to the view. Very quickly, uh, we are the Wildwood community. And just to give you a clear idea of what we're talking about, we're concerned with sidewalks between 55 and South Main, Piney Wilburn. We are the blue area, that's the Wildwood. The red area is Lowe's Wegman, green is Collins Park, yellow is the Car Wash. Uh, we've got Exchange, Hawthorne coming in, Village Gate proposed, and Stephen, the Stevens Tract. So there is a lot of traffic on that road already and a lot more coming. In fact, in addition to the 150 homes, about 500 people in Wildwood, the town council has already approved 316 units for the exchange, 185 for Hawthorne, we expect to be approved tonight, 292 townhomes for Stevens, Collins Park is coming for commercial, Lowe's and Wegmans is coming for commercial. And from what I can tell, Wegmans is gonna draw a crowd like an amusement park, not a grocery store. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a desperate need for safe pedestrian access on Ralph Stevens Road. The good news is developers are gonna put it in from 55 all the way to Wildwood Farmway, north and south side, and Collins Park will continue on on the north side. We can't quite tell where looking at the street it's gonna end, but as long as town staff work to make it happen, we're happy. And by the way, I would like to pause and thank the town staff who have been tireless. We've been working on this since late summer, trying to understand the history of Ralph Stevens Road, the Southern Crossroads Master Plan, the UDO, and the process for sidewalks and town staff have been so patient in answering our questions, answering emails, 
way too early in the morning and way too late at night, quite frankly, mm -hmm. for their own good, and even meeting with us more than once. And in particular, I'd like to thank Rachel Jones, Aaron Levitt, Mary DePina, and John Schifano. So again, this part of Ralph Stevens Road is covered. Our concern is from <coughs> Piney Wilburn to Wild Farm Way and getting from the south side to the north side. Most of the residential is on the south side of Wildwood Farm Way, and there's no pedestrian crossing to get across it. There's one pedestrian crossing across South Main, but nothing across Ralph Stevens Road. So I'd like to show you what I'm talking about. This is standing on Wildwood Farm Way looking towards South Main. And if you can see, that's not a shoulder, that's a sobriety strip waiting to happen. There is no safe place to walk. And as you move towards, you've got a curve and nowhere to go as cars come forward. As we approach Southern Crossroads, the shoulder gets a little bit wider, but there's still nowhere that children can walk. There's nowhere families can walk to, to get to or from the apartments or any of the other amenities. And you can see Southern, the intersection with uh, South Main down the road. Coming back, just turn around. And again, you can see Collins Park in the end. We think the Collins Park sidewalks will end somewhere around here. This is what we affectionately call the death curve. It's a blind curve. You can't see cars coming at you and cars can't see you. If you're lucky, it's mowed. And then you're back to Collins Park. Again, the good news is we think that this is all gonna be sidewalk from Collins Park. Our concern is from the Collins Park area to Wildwood Farm Way. We understand the terms of the Southern Crossroads Master Plan and the settlement that produced it mean a developer cannot be required. We know they're uh, to required to put in sidewalks or pedestrian crossings. We understand that there are ongoing conversations with the developer to recognize that there's a lot more development going on and that it would benefit the safety of the neighbors in Southern Crossroads, the residents, to have sidewalks and crosswalks. And we encourage the town to work with that. We'd love it if the developer would do that. But our understanding is that when the Southern Crossroads Master Plan was approved, the town understood that they were saving money. And we as taxpayers happen to agree with the decision not to pay a private citizen a few extra million and instead to approve this master plan. We think the sidewalks and the pedestrian crossings were saying the town will foot that bill was a fiscally responsible decision. But we're here to say it's time for those sidewalks. So we have already submitted with Mr. Levitt a request to have the, the southern sidewalk scored, ranked, prioritized. That's going to be the expensive part. It's going to take more time. We ask for the town council to help prioritize that. But our ask for tonight is the north side. That through a combination of working with the developer and town finding the funds that they committed to indirectly when this when Southern Crossroads was approved to put sidewalks from Collins Park to South Main to put a pedestrian crossing across Ralph Stevens Road at South Main and at Wildwood Farmway. Wildwood Farmway, there will be a traffic light installed by Lowe's when the Wegmans open. That's a perfect time to put a pedestrian crosswalk in. That may take a while. We can wait. We'd like to be efficient with it. And again, we're taxpayers. We're not looking to come up with the fastest, most expensive option. But we are asking that these sidewalks be made a priority by the town council. We are available to talk to you and to answer questions. We will be in touch. Uh, we will stay in touch with town staff to understand what's going on. We invite you to come out, walk if you feel brave enough, or drive very slowly and imagine what it would like to be to walk on that road, especially as the development comes in and potentially up to 2,000 people are traveling Ralph Stevens Road wanting to get to the amenities. So thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, <coughs> if you stick around for 8A, I think we might have a solution on the north side. We would love that. And then okay. we can look, talk about the south side. Yeah. All right. And I'm assuming you talked for the other two that signed up, am I correct? Yes, I, I spoke for both of them. Yes. We're okay on that? Okay. In that case, we will now close the public here or public comments and go to. Agenda item 6A, request and communication, Holly Springs Skyhawks presentation. And I will uh, ask Doug LeRoy and Jason Guterman.
to come forward and whoever else. And uh, Daniel Mock, okay. Tell us what you've been doing. I recognize some faces here. You got some good news, I think. Jim Wassley, we asked Jim, we asked Jim to come up as well. Making all kinds of mistakes today. So we know who's after us, uh, this. It's, it's your drone delivery update. So we, we want to say the Skyhawks, uh, we deliver fun, not food. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the presentation queued up? There you go. There we go. Thanks. Uh, do I just click to advance? So a little bit about the Skyhawks. We're a uh, hobby club here in the town of Holly Springs, and our mission is to promote the uh, uh, model aviation as a hobby to the general community. Uh, we're a registered North Carolina nonprofit. Uh, we're, we were founded in September of. 2015, we're a charter club at the Academy of Model Aeronautics. We earned a gold leader club status uh, last year. That's fewer than 5% of the clubs in the Academy of Model Aeronautics have that designation. Um, we have 49 members. 15 of those, or 30%, are seniors, so folks that grew up playing <laughs> with toys, flying model airplanes, and uh, really like the fact that we have this going in, in, in the park in town, and six youth members. We have two key partnerships. One is with the Holly Springs Parks and Rec Department, which uh, they, they graciously uh, have allowed us to use a section of Sug Farm as a flying site. And uh, we also uh, sponsor Meg Smile Foundation, have a partnership with them as our sponsored charity. Yep. A little bit about the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Um, it was founded in 1936. It's the world's largest uh, model aviation association. They, it's a self-supporting nonprofit. They are purpose is to promote the development of model aviation as a recognized sport and worthwhile re recreation activity. And for over 80 years, they've been a leader in aviation safety. Um, they work with uh, the FAA, the FCC, uh, you know, departments in government to make sure that uh, modeling is, is, not, you know, is, is not as restricted as it might otherwise be. And, and they're a voice of our membership uh, to do that. So they spend a lot of time with the government agencies. Um, they also work with the local uh, governments and zoning boards. We, when we were forming our club and talking to the Parks and Rec, we had them on the phone as we were trying to you know, discuss how we'd operate the site and do those types of things and just get people comfortable with what we do. Uh, and it's like I said, it's been a great partnership, and I have to thank uh, Holly Springs Parks and Rec Department. Um, can't thank them enough. Uh, Steve McElhaney, who literally found us on his Cushman uh, one day when we were flying in the park, and Carolyn Couch, who's encouraged us even before we thought we were ready to have events in town and uh, do those things. Lloyd Puzak, uh, who's welcomed us with open arms as a fixture at Hollyfest, that's fantastic. And Leanne Plummer has been uh, very supportive of us as she's uh, taken her role uh, here in the town. That picture on the bottom uh, right there is uh, we did uh, some buddy boxes for the kids at the yeah. uh, Fast Lake days, and we also did it at Hollyfest. Um, Tried to give uh, national recognition uh, for, her, for our club and Holly Springs. I've done that in several ways. I've written uh, several articles over the years for our Wings Over Springs event that has been on a, a pretty large uh, forum out there on the internet. It's uh, RC Groups. Um, I've had our, our, our events have been written about uh, in Model Aviation Magazine, which is published nationwide to the memberships of the, of the Academy. And then most recently, we've been uh, featured several times, I think four times now, on the Park Flyer podcast. And actually, the, the hosts of that actually uh, recorded the show while they were here at Wings Over Springs. So it's been pretty good. Uh, if I could show a short video um, about our Wings Over Springs event, we had tremendous growth in the participation. We've tried to create this venue as a, as a, as a fantastic flying venue for model aviators to come from around the state. Um, and 18% growth says that we're, we're getting that job done. And 100% of the 25 or 30 respondents that we had, they said they plan to return next year. So we got people already anticipating that. So.
parachute drop. <laughs> That's what Most of them ended, ended up in the trees. How high are we flying? Uh, 400 feet. Okay, and uh, okay. one of the things we do at this event is we, we do raise money to give back to the, uh, it's our in-kind uh, contribution to the town, and we um, would like to present a check to the Holly Springs Park and Recreation Department for $1,500 tonight. Mm -hmm. So Thank we can you. have a <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. Good job. Great club. I want to ride in one of those planes sometime. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> yes, sure I do. Thanks again. Didn't I am 6B request communication, the drone pilot program first flight update. Aaron Levitt, let's go make some introductions. Looking good tonight, Aaron. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Aaron Levin, Engineering Department. I'm just here tonight to give a brief uh, intro for our industry partners in the uh, drone pilot program, and that's Causey Unmanned and Flytrex. Before I get to that, um, the purpose of tonight's event is to just update council uh, on the progress we've made so far with the uh, FAA's drone pilot program and uh, some information about the first flight event. There's no action requested tonight. Uh, so. Just going back, you know, I've been here a few times discussing the program, but uh, as a background, we <clears throat> applied into this uh, FAA's pilot program, which the goal of it was to incorporate drones into the national airspace uh, to facilitate more use of uh, this new technology. Um, really, the, the FAA's goal was to team up industry with local government, state governments, uh, to propel the industry forward. Um, we applied back in early 2018. We were paired with Flytrex, so we met up and, and found similar interests. Uh, that we then teamed up with NCDOT Division of Aviation uh, and submitted a formal application. Uh, we were then selected as one uh, of the teams out of 10 nationwide. There was a pool of about 150, and we selected 10. Since then, uh, one has dropped out. Um, and after the selection process, the FAA actually prioritized the Holly Springs operations uh, towards the top of the NC Department of Transportation's uh, team. Um, so uh, the, the, the role of Holly Springs in the pilot program is really to uh, just be a host to this, this new technology, uh, Flytrex and Causey, and uh, to really focus on citizen outreach and education. Uh, so, as far as what we've done so far on that front, um, public outreach and education, we've been to a few town council meetings, we've held uh, two public information meetings, uh, public outreach at town events, we were just at Holly Fest, spoke to about 200 people, and I think every single one was positive. Um, social media postings, we've also had articles featuring the town, uh, the 
New York Times, News and Observer, Wall Street Journal, a number of podcasts. Um, and then actually recently today, I just met with the Holly Springs High School Robotics Club, uh, the uh, Hop, or, uh, Hawkimus Prime. Mm -hmm. It's a 96 bright, young, uh, thirsty children or young, young adults. And they're doing some amazing stuff. So some of the robotics they had on display were uh, just really inspiring. And you know, I came out of there with a lot of energy and just excited about what they were doing. They're um, incredible. We, yeah. they, they're they are. Incredible. And we're planning on having them featured uh, in some position at the first flight event, uh, showing yeah. off their, their robots. Um, so that's really uh, all I had for you today. We, we, we have... Uh, as far as regulatory progress, we've had semi-annual meetings with the FAA. This, this picture at the bottom right here is uh, the entire uh, NCDOT team with some FAA mm -hmm. uh, people. So it's a big operation. So meeting with them twice a year has been really beneficial to progressing. Uh, we've had discussions with the White House Office of Management and Budget. And uh, late in the summer, we, Flytrex and uh, Causey Aviation received FAA approval. <coughs> Uh, to proceed with phase one operations. Um, so I'm going to call up uh, the head of U.S. operations in a second, but I just want to see if there were any questions as far as the town's um, involvement on this project. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, okay well, with that, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Wes Shover. He's head of U.S. operations with Flytrex. Hi, Wes. Mr. Mayor, town uh, council people, thank you for giving me the time to come up. I was here about a year ago. Was there anyone here from Flashwood? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was here about a year ago, so I'm um, happy to be back. It's been a long and grueling year with the FA. Uh, mm -hmm. First, I just want to thank everyone with the town of Holly Springs that has really been critical in the success of all of our planning and zoning, Connie, Melissa, Beth, Aaron. Uh, the people over at uh, Ting Park as well. Um, this is a, a 3D rendering of our site, but we actually have the site finished. There was just debris in the yard from the local vendor doing the fencing, so I wasn't able to capture uh, a new video, or a new photo, rather. Um, but the, the year has been very grueling to get the approval that Aaron mentioned in August we received. Uh, Kazi Aviation actually received approval to operate um, drone delivery to Ting Park from Holly Springs Town Center. So this is the, the rendering, but if you go to O2 Fitness and Holly Springs Town Center, you ac actually can see our finished site with a, you know, a sign on the side. So I really want to thank Aaron and the team at the town of Holly Springs for navigating, helping me navigate the permits and approvals and fees and uh, codes, <laughs> picking the right flowers and picking the right landscaping to make it all make sense at uh, Holly Springs Town Center because we didn't want to uh, skip, a, skip any of the processes. We wanted to make sure no it, was, problem. it was good. So. Yeah, it's been, it's been terrific. Um, first, I just wanted to share a video. This is actually from our first delivery flight in Liberty. Uh, Kazi Aviation has been in business for 50 years. They have an airport out in Liberty, North Carolina. Um, this is the first delivery we did uh, as part of some final tests with the FAA. So this is from 100 feet. And so um, one of the changes that we made from the last presentation was uh, our delivery hook, so our delivery mechanism. Um, we, we elevated the, the drone to 100 feet to keep it within line of sight. Um, and we've been testing and flying it and proving it to the FAA for the past year that it's safe and reliable. We added a parachute. Um, we added a lot of things to make it reliable, and that's what led to our approval. So just so everyone knows, um, in order to cross like a road, it's a very, very heavy, heavy burden. There's only been one or two other companies authorized to do it, and there were over 35 on our roads. Um, and that was State Farm for like, uh, search and rescue operations and, and hurricane operations. So we were able to obtain approval, one of the first companies ever, um, because of how we've proven the safety and reliability of our aircraft. So uh, it, it's, it's not taken with a grain of salt. We're very uh, focused on making sure our operations are safe. Uh, so yeah, Aaron mentioned why we're here. So the integration pilot program, one of the biggest um, asset or aspects of the program is making sure we're doing public engagement and finding out, you know, what does the public think about this technology? How is uh, citizens going to interact with it? How's it going to change their lives? Because it's never been offered to the public before. So we're all learning 
you know, how's it going to change behaviors? How's it going to improve our lives? So having engagement sessions, especially uh, with the people that are going to be using the service has been extremely rewarding. We've learned a lot. We've uh, learned from some things that we didn't really think about. We are at Holly Fest and we're able to engage with about, I'd say probably close to the 250, 250 people. And um, there were some jokes made, of course, about drones in the sky, but ultimately everybody's really, really excited. They wanted to know who, whose food we were gonna deliver first is really the, the question that was asked. Um, we're not ready to announce that yet. But yeah, so Kazi Aviation, <coughs> they've been in business. Uh, they're a jet charter company out of RDU. Uh, they're now Kazi Aviation on Man, um, a sister company of uh, Kazi Aviation. Um, yeah, so we're excited to, to get going. Um, our aircraft, so we've been operating this aircraft in Iceland for over two years. Mm -hmm. We've been doing backyard deliveries um, for many months, about eight months now. Um, so it's, it's been proven we've done several thousand flights. The one change that we made in the US because the FAA made us is putting this parachute on it. Um, so not only was it already safe, we made it even safer in case there ever was a failure, which we never, we've never had in a commercial del delivery operation by, you know, in case there's a motor failure, a parachute deploys and there's an audible noise. Um, but our, our, our flight control uh, software allows um, containment of the drone, so there's never any flyaways. If there is, it just deploys a parachute. Um, but yeah, we've, we've proven that the system has been reliable at this very rigorous <coughs> testing in New York State. We crashed a lot of drones proving that the parachute works, um, but we're ready to go. So now we're just trying to work with the FAA on the, the right time to conduct the operations. Um, we've done a lot of traffic studies to find out what is the lowest risk time across uh, Highway 55. We submitted our proposal and received approval uh, because the risk is much, much lower than general aviation uh, risk. And uh, basically you see here, here's the O2 Fitness, that's our distribution facility. It's all fenced in, so we've created a sanitized um, lawn area or it's our airport. We take off and fly over the trees. Uh, we fly along the, the power line at 230 foot and then we cross right at this intersection. And it takes 1.2 seconds to cross this um, highway and then we deliver in the corner. And down here is another sanitized uh, delivery site location where we'll have a delivery site representative just there to open the gate and shut it and engage with everybody. The thing that the Office of uh, Management and Budget from the White House loved about this and the thing that the FAA loves about this is there's no other drone delivery operation that could scale to maybe impact 100, 200, 300,000 people. Because of how many visitors happen at Team Park per year, we're able to engage and teach and and talk about safety and talk about this technology and get the feedback like no other operation. Even Google, who's already operating in, in Virginia, they're delivering to one point and everybody has to congregate there, but it's a person's house. Here, we're going to a park. Um, so that is one of our, our top points is me being able to engage and our staff being able to engage with the people there, the bystanders that teach them about you know, drone safety <coughs> and delivery safety and how it's going to impact their lives. So. Uh, we're really excited to start flying. Um, daylight savings kind of for us a little bit. <laughs> we didn't forget about that. Um, but yeah, we're working on our first flight event um, in the upcoming week. So as soon as we know, we'll do a, a public announcement and an open invite to everybody on the uh, town council and um, also out in the public <coughs> as well. So next steps, um, we've gathered traffic data. Right now we're crunching the numbers to produce an updated risk um, number for weekend. Um, we ran into a little bit of snafu because of Holly Fest. That was one of the, the surveys that we did, but it's kind of an anomaly because of 5,000 extra people in town. Um, <laughs> the next thing is to schedule the first flight event and coordinate with the FAA. There's a lot of moving parts um, for the first flight event and getting final inspections done. And then uh, we've been openly engaging with the vendors at Holly Springs Town Center, talking about our operation and working really closely with Kite Realty Group um, our partners on this have been absolutely incredible. Kite Realty is, is a major partner in this. They've you know, given us the ability to operate on that lawn um, instead of building for now, just to see how things go. I mean, it's been tremendous with them. So, um, And then really, once we're starting to fly, we're open for business. And it, you know, it will be, quote unquote, a test, but um, we have authorization to fly until 
we decide we're not applying anymore uh, until our permits run out with Holly Springs, temporary permits. So um, it will be open for business and we hope to uh, deliver my house for sure. Mm -hmm. the, the drone company. So um, we're excited about starting. And this is uh, another photo we're flying right next to some of the, the air traffic out at Liberty. <coughs> I'd like to introduce Jeff. So Jeff is the CEO of Kazi Aviation on Man. If you want to say anything, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Town Council questions or comments? The board said being very excited about this. Well, of the folks that you saw at Hollyfest, were folks still asking if you had cameras in the drones, or is that no? no okay, that so question, education has gone out. Yeah, well, we printed some really big billboard and signs that showed the drone up close and talked about all the parts. We've been really open about sharing those types of things and that question never came up. It was about bird hunting with shotguns that kind of came up once or twice, but they were just joking. And um, otherwise they were really excited. They couldn't believe that it was happening in Holly Springs. And they were really proud of the town, you know, uh, partnering with us on this. And everybody's really excited. Everyone wants Starbucks in the backyard before the bus shows right. up, so. <laughs> the only other question, when you were showing the, the video, how loud, can you hear the drone when you're on the ground? Like, uh, so you can hear it, it's about the same decibel as you and I having a conversation. Okay. Um, that's at 65 foot, so at 100 foot, it's gonna be mm -hmm. even lesser, so. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very, very low. I did it, we did it at a golf course for about three months while people were playing golf, and not once did they stop their swing or stop their putt. Okay. And it was, flying right over them, they didn't even recognize it. So um, we're really confident that it won't negatively impact the people and we, we hope uh, there's a line where they can get to it. So, we'll see. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, I just know everybody's gonna wanna be taking their kid to soccer practice so they can order their dinner yeah, out. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we hope. There's a lot of people, I mean, I drive by all the time. I live, I moved to Apex, by the way, this year, I moved in July and I, I have an office right next door. So I'm working at a Holly Springs. We shop in Holly Springs all the time. My kids go to Bryson's um, at Chop and Baker. So we really love Holly Springs. And I mean, when I go by Team Park, there's you know hundreds, if not thousands, of people there. Sometimes they're all stuck. <laughs> so yes. we hope to help them out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, and yes. Council, just real quick. As soon as the date is locked down for that first flight event, we'll make sure to get that on your calendar. At this point, though, uh, it's still TBD. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Very excited. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wes. Thanks. Thank you. Come back and see us. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> and thank you, Jeff, for coming. Agenda item 7A, consent agenda, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made and second all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Agenda item 8A, unfinished business. This is Development Plan 19-DP-11, Hawthorne and Holly Springs, Southern Crossroads Master Plan, multi-family residential lot. And we're gonna start off with Gina Clapp from Planning and Zoning. Yes, good evening. As the mayor said, I'm Gina Clapp with Department of Planning and Zoning. And tonight we're here to continue to review a proposed multi-family development plan. This item was presented to you at the town council meeting on October 15th and the town council chose to continue this item to allow the developer to continue to explore additional pedestrian connectivity options. The public hearing at that meeting was open and closed, so there is no public hearing associated with this item this evening. Um, at the end, we would recommend a motion um, for the development plan and a potential additional condition to be added. And so, um, continuation of that background, after the meeting on October 15th, uh, the land development team uh, considered some different options. They reached out to staff, and so the landowner, the developer, their attorney, met with town staff and our attorney to discuss a proposal for some additional pedestrian connectivity with this project. And just as a reminder, <coughs> the project is the Hawthorne at Holly Springs Apartments. It is located here in the southeast corner of Piney Grove Wilden Road and Southern Crossroads, or Crossings Boulevard, and it is for a 185 unit apartment complex. This is the site for the Hawthorne Apartments. This is the exchange apartments that are currently under construction, 
and along Southern Crossings Boulevard, there are existing sidewalks on that street. It is Ralph Stevens Road and Piney um, Grove Wilbem Road that do not have sidewalks as part of the Southern uh, Crossroads project. And the um, site plan has not been modified since the last uh, town council meeting. And so a series of buildings, you have the clubhouse and the pool facility at the entrance, a children's playground at the corner of Piney Grove and Southern Crossings uh, Boulevard. And this project is proposing a greenway connection uh, to this greenway here that was um, along the southern property line that is being constructed as part of the exchange apartments. And, oops, there was another slide that's gone. Um, so the planning board did make a recommendation uh, to approve the project. They did also have some concerns regarding pedestrian connectivity. Planning board presented their recommendation to you at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, I would like to turn this over to Rachel Jones from Engineering to talk about the petitioner's proposal. Okay. Hi, Rachel. <coughs> Good evening. Rachel Jones with Engineering Department. So as Gina mentioned, there has been subsequent discussions with the developer and their team with staff regarding the request for um, exploring the potential for pedestrian connectivity in this area. So with the Hawthorne Apartments project, 1,360 linear feet of five foot wide sidewalk is being proposed along the northern side of Ralph Stevens Road from the intersection at South Main Street along the property frontage to the eastern property line that will connect with the Collins Park Master Plan. This property before you is part of the Southern Crossroads Master Plan. And the sidewalk will be constructed within the existing right-of-way and within additional dedicated sidewalk easement where necessary. So this is just a, a blow-up of the area um, where the crosswalk will be marked at the intersection with Southern Crossings Boulevard. You can see the pavement will be marked from the south end of Ralph Stevens across the intersection and additional pedestrian signage will be included as well. So this slide is to provide you with an overview of what this segment of sidewalk can do for the Ralph Stevens area and the pedestrian connectivity that is of concern. Um, you'll see what's highlighted in blue is a complete pedestrian connection from Avent Ferry Road on the north side of Ralph Stevens Road all the way to the bypass. So there was a gap here between South Main Street and Collins Park. And with this addition of the 1,361 feet, we would have a full pedestrian connection in this area. Um, I think one of the residents mentioned earlier, there's a project, uh, Finn's Car Wash, that is currently under administrative review that will complete the sidewalk from the um, eastern Collins Park property line where they connect and bring that to the bypass. So the proposed new condition that is before you in your packets tonight um, indicates the timing of the construction of the sidewalk that it will be attached to the Hawthorne apartment project and also the request from the developer to be reimbursed um, for the fees uh, in the amount on the screen before you. The petitioner is present tonight if you have any questions at this time. The suggested motion is um, on the screen before you. Any other questions or comments from the board before we motion? Appreciate all parties getting together and and uh, getting it handled, and especially the councilman Barry, who I think mm -hmm. taking the lead on yeah. getting it done. Uh, it's, uh, it's a win for the town. Okay. You want to tackle the motion? Motion to approve development plan 19 DP 11 for Hawthorne, Hawthorne at Holly Springs with the conditions stated in the packet. Second. What's the main and second all favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jeannie. Gen item 9A, new business, Avon Ferry Road Realignment Transportation Bond Project Pre-Construction Services. That would be Tim Athene. Engineering. Hi, Tim. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Town Council. Council. My name is Tim Athey. I'm the Transportation uh, Engineer for the Town of Holly Springs. And tonight, I would like to discuss with you the Avon Ferry Road Realignment Project. This is one of our green bond projects. The purpose of tonight's discussion is to introduce the selected engineering consultant for the Haven Ferry Road Realignment Bond Project. Requested action are uh, twofold. First is to approve the design budget for this project uh, with a budget of $960,500. This will come from the interfund loan previously approved to the project account. Second motion is to approve the design consultant contract for Mead and Hunt. And here we see uh, my best friend, the um, transportation bond map. Right here mm -hmm. is the Avon Ferry Road Realignment Project. Again, that's one of the six green uh, bond projects that are uh, fully funded by our 2018 bond. And if we look at this aerial, you can see the alignment is actually um, a new alignment that will come off of Avon Ferry. This is the Bypass 55. Avon Ferry will uh, still continue uh, with its current alignment to uh, the downtown area. So we'll split with the new alignment. We'll align with the existing Pine Avenue. Uh, we'll cross Main Street and do a little whoop de doo on the Stinson. The uh, proposed alignment... Um, is that a whoop de doo That's, that's that an engineering, engineering term. Problem? I'll explain that to you afterwards. Just check it. Sure. So again, the realignment will start approximately at Cotton Lane and, and mm -hmm. end at Stinson Avenue. A uh, consultant selection process was held and Mead and Hunt was <coughs> the most qualified firm for this project. A public outreach meeting was held with Mead and Hunt on August 6th, in which we introduced the project to the public. Benefits of the project, it'll create a new crosstown connection from Avon Ferry Road to Bass Lake Road. And again, that's via Pine Avenue and Stinson Avenue. It'll relieve congestion along the village district, specifically down Main Street and on our tree streets. And it'll establish a couple uh, new gateways into the village district. The team leader for Mead and Hunt is Rick Nicola, and I apologize on his behalf. He cannot make it tonight. He is on uh, family vacation. The uh, responsibilities for Mead and Hunt are as follow, follows. They will uh, perform the survey of the project, and this red outline represents a best guess of what we think will have to be surveyed. It doesn't necessarily represent the uh, construction impacts. Uh, of course, they'll be in charge of the project design. They will put together the right-of-way plats. They will be in charge of coordination and meetings, environmental documents. They will perform geotechnical assessments. They will be the uh, coordinator between uh, us and the uh, North Carolina Department of Transportation and they will put together the construction bid package uh, for the final bid package for the uh, construction project. The uh, schedule for Avon Ferry Road realignment <coughs> tentatively looks like this. Uh, winter 2019, Mead and Hunt will begin the survey and design of the project. In the spring of 2021, uh, we will begin the right-of-way acquisition, and this happens at the 65% plan completion uh, time frame. And at that time, prior to uh, sending uh, John Schiffano and his small army out to acquire right away, we'll, we'll approach town council for approval. Summer of 2022, uh, we will again approach town council for the approval of the uh, construction contractor. We anticipate this project will take about a year to construct 
So we're looking at the summer of 2023 for a final project completion. And again, the uh, consultant contract for meet and hunt for the design and survey will be $960,500. And I'll open it for questions. Questions or comments, Tim? Tim, I have a couple questions. Um, the, the first one, the project budget on this is 2.4 million, and we're using about 40% of that, almost a million dollars on the survey and design. Do we, do we still expect that project budget to be realistic for the construction piece at this point? Most likely, uh, we will not hit that budget due to the uh, factors that we've been uh, discussing uh, beforehand because of uh, the current economic conditions, the construction, uh, especially in the construction world, and and uh, cost of materials and wages, et cetera. So uh, to answer your question, most likely no. Was the design portion over what we thought it was going to be, or are those, is that anticipation largely on the construction piece? The uh, design budget for this contract is above what we had originally anticipated several years ago. But um, I, I do want to mention that we went through three rounds with Meet and Hunt. Their original contract was for um, north of $1.2 million. So we went through uh, two revisions of that contract to where we felt like it was a better number for the, for the town. And another thing, the $960,500 uh, 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 $960, contract represents is um, about 30% of contingency. We don't anticipate using that. There are some items that we most likely will not have to use. Uh, we're looking more in the area of probably about $800,000. Okay, thanks. The second question I had was, I know design will come back to us at that point. I just had a question. The I believe the intent of this project will have it widened from Avent Ferry all the way to Stinson to the ultimate cross section, which will include sidewalks on both sides. Is that correct? That is the uh, the the initial uh, cross section had sidewalks on both sides. Uh, we we have been uh, we discussed with Parks and Rec about incorporating an eight foot wide sidewalk. If that were to happen, we may have to look at areas where sidewalk, the eight foot wide sidewalk um, would be on one side, and, and that would, I'm sorry, that would be the only sidewalk, would be the eight foot sidewalk. Um, don't really want to do that, um, but uh, we have a lot of options. One sidewalk, we can have two sidewalks, eight foot, five foot, or we could have two five foot sidewalks. Um, we're not gonna, we're not going to spend extra money to have eight-foot sidewalks. That's kind of the Cadillac version, or if everyone knows what Cadillac is. Um, but um, that that does that answer your question? We have several options that yeah. we're looking at, but the bottom line is we want the best option that will suit our citizens and also uh, be the most cost-effective. Will it be the 65% completion where that comes back? To think about the sidewalk, or at what point will we have? We, we should have that determined by then. Okay. Are there questions or comments? Anything else? Mm -hmm. No. If if I could add one more thing, I, I just yeah. want the council to understand that that uh, the budget that we're presenting for this um, uh, contract is what I would consider the worst case scenario. Um, we're gonna try our darndest to beat that down and make sure that we spend a lot less than this $960,000. The last thing I wanna do is come back up here and ask you guys for more money for that mm -hmm. consulting mm -hmm. contract. Okay. All right, we have two motions. Motion to approve the attached design budget for the Aiden Ferry Road realignment green bond project and move nine hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred and sixty five hundred thousand dollars from prior council approved interfund loan to the project account forty eight dot six twenty dot twelve dot oh one. Second. Motion made second all in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> 
Motion passed unanimously. Number two. Motion to award the contract to Mead and Hunt in the amount of uh, $960,500. Second. Let them make a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion also passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Item number 10 is other business, and I'd like to start off by saying I have to mention crosswalk safety. I've been watching, and I think we're making progress. I really do. Uh, not there yet, but it's like speeding. It's getting better, but we're not there yet. Um, hope you all voted. That was today. And we may hear in the next, no, it's not 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. We may hear in the next hour or so. Uh, 13,500 people was the estimate that was approved for Holly Fest. Would be due. That's 35% of our population. I know there's a few people came from Freeway, but most of them were correct. And uh, other than that, who else? I just wanted to um, take a quick minute and acknowledge the folks from Wildwood that came out. Uh, while we did vote on the Hawthorne plan that was a solution for a sidewalk on the north side, I hear you all. I live a half mile away from that intersection. You won't find um, a larger proponent for connectivity there than myself. So I'm, I'm committed to seeing that we get those improvements there. We get a crosswalk at Wildwood Farm Way, hopefully get something on the south side. Um, that development agreement has been a, a painful thing for me to sift through in the last 18 months and um, finding a way to help alleviate some of the, the lack of connectivity we have out there will be a priority for me. So I hear you. Um, thanks for coming and, and hopefully we're on, on the right path by getting this north side approved and, and we'll keep at it. Thank you. Who else? Looking good? All right. At this point in time, we'll go to item 11, the manager's report. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two items. The first one, just a uh, reminder or an announcement to the community that on Monday, Veterans Day, there is a Veterans Day uh, memorial event that will be at Veterans Park at noon on, uh, on Monday. And uh, so we look forward to uh, any of you coming out. And others the, that event. The, uh, the second item, as you know, since our last workshop on, uh, in, in October, there's a conversation around the Holly Springs Road Median Project, and since that time, staff has been working hard with uh, the developer of the area that's impacted, in particular, as well as NCBOT and, um, and other consultant staff to try to work through some potential options as it relates to that. I'd like to invite up Andrea Parrish, our engineering director, just to, we've got this four slides, I want to highlight where we are and to confirm um, uh, where next steps might be. Good evening. Um, Kendra Parrish, Director of Engineering. And as our town manager mentioned, um, there's been quite a bit of activity over the last four weeks. Uh, to summarize, we've had uh, three meetings with our traffic consulting engineer. This is the consultant that we hired to do the traffic study to look at the opportunity for a leftover into Ernie Drive. We've had three meetings with the site consulting engineer. That's the engineer that was drawing up the plan for the leftover. And then subsequent meetings <coughs> with DOT to try to um, pursue this opportunity that is not standard in getting DOT on board with that. Um, we've also had several meetings with the contractor as well as the Lennar project manager. As a result of the activities, the town went ahead and paid for the traffic analysis as well as the plan and got those um, over to DOT's office and uh, had DOT approve those and um, were, you know, approved the left only into Arnie Lane as a temporary measure. And just when we call it a temporary measure, that's just knowing that as part of the comprehensive transportation plan, the intersection of West Holly Springs Road and the bypass will eventually be a great separated interchange. So anything that we do here is temporary. Um, when we met with the contractor, uh, their estimated cost was uh, just under $140,000 for this work. So then we moved into our negotiation stage. Um, 
we looked at the developer funding 51% of the project and the town funding 49%. Um, this evening, that is where we're at. We also have um, our developer, Ellie Zablu, that we've been talking with um, of the Holly Springs Professional Development. And he's requested also, um, as part of this negotiation, is to look at the fees that are remaining with the medical office building and um, perhaps looking at uh, waiving those fees as part of this negotiation as well. And as far as funding sources, um, potential town funding sources, the 43,488 could come from street reserves and 25,112 from general fund. Um, so this is what we're just uh, putting before you tonight is where we're at in the negotiations, what that package may could look like. And what we're, we'll be doing is um, investigating more on the, um, the fee waiver portion and what that is and then starting to talk about an agreement. But we did want to update you um, as far as where we're at. Um, and this is, so for next steps, we'll go ahead and um, look at the partnership, the framework, and come back for consideration at the, either we could do the November 12th workshop, or we could do the November 19th business meeting for actual um, voting. Um, option two is pursue media modification with the future design. So if council did not want to see this framework, um, one option is looking at just whenever uh, West Holly Springs Road is widened that this be incorporated into that future project. Um, and then option three was allowing the developer to use this study in the plans and they could pursue the modification on their own or also look at uh, con the connection towards the back of the develop development to the existing <coughs> subdivision. So again, these are all the different options, just putting those before you. So we can take any kind of questions, any feedback, if you... Questions or comments? Thoughts? Reactions? I'd like to add some type of resolution to this mm -hmm. fairly quickly. So, um, if we look at option number one. Mm -hmm. I'd like to explain that. Yeah. The purpose Thank is you. to give her, obviously, two ideas. Mm -hmm. Option number one to mention. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Option number yeah. one. All right, great. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I do want to recognize Kendra. She has put in a lot of work in the oh, yeah. past two yeah. three weeks um, in terms of coordinating with the developer and the DOT and the potential to do the analysis. So I just want to thank you, uh, Ms. Parrish, for that work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before we do this, uh, by the way, there will be a food truck at the Veterans Day. Propaganda. I hope everybody shows up because we really, this is the second time we're really honoring our veterans. And uh, there's no cost to come. The food truck, you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd love to see you there. We'll be there. Item number 12, post station counselor. I don't have anything. I, I do, well, I have the mic, just want to echo Mr. Billison's uh, commendation to Mr. Berry about the negotiation on the sidewalk issue rare. I don't think I, after in doing the 17 years I've ever had been able to play the role of good cop because there is a bad cop there. He did, he did that. <laughs> Usually I'm the bad cop, so that was, uh, it was a very uh, effective negotiation. Now that uh, here I can, I can say that. Thank you, Josh. All right, anything else? Going once, going twice. How about a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes unanimously.